<laughs> when I go out and do photography, uh, the main kind of inspiration that I have going into it is that I want to experience life. With photography, I look for things that when I'm just walking down the street going to school or whatever it is, I'm not looking for. With photography, I'm looking for those like minor details and those little nuances of uh, people or you know construction workers um, working. There's so there you I pay attention to smaller smaller things, and so going into it, I kind of have like what what aspect of life will I see today, and like what can I capture? My ultimate goal would be to capture humanity in the world. And what, not so much, you know, people being nice to each other, but just the day-to-day -day things. I mean, I would even find it interesting to um, take pictures of going through like a drive through at a fast food restaurant because it is a experience that everyone in the, you know, 20th and 21st century has. And so it's become part of our life. And so going through a drive through and taking photos of it, not so much in a documentary style of like, this is going through a drive through but of taking the of taking of the photos to convey a sort of everyday life, but it may be in kind of a cool way, maybe in a more artistic way than simple shots, is kind of what inspires me to go out and want to achieve. Like that's what I want to do. Like I hope to um, aspire to those kind of photographs. I started in when I went to Grossmont, um, I think my second year. Um, it actually started, I took a um, history of photography class, and um, I thought, I just got the numbers wrong on the, like, the class roster or whatever, and so I thought it was a photography class where I'd be taking pictures, and trying to be the history of, history of photography, and um, so I went back and I wanted to do the actual photography class, so I signed up for the history of photography and the actual class itself, and so uh, that was actually kind of a, a cool little thing too, because as you take photography and you learn about the history of it while you're taking it, um, like taking shots and stuff, it just sort of comes together in a kind of a cool fashion where and you're exposed to so many different photographers so quickly that you sort of, um, the sky's the limit, so you can pick from any of your favorite photographers and shoot in their style. And so um, after you learn kind of the basics of a camera, um, it's pretty much um, fun to just go out there and try and shoot who you admire and who you uh, kind of like their style. So originally, I once I started getting into photography and once we learned the basics of the camera um, and just learned how to get a proper exposure on manual mode, just you working all the settings. I remember I went to um, downtown San Diego and it's right by the uh, harbor, but there's like, this water the water fountain and they'll just kind of shoot up here and there and um, uh, there'll be a little, uh, kind of like little jets going up and down. But I remember just experimenting with the camera and um, changing the uh, shutter speeds. And this was my first time really ever, ever using a camera to that extent. Um, otherwise it had always been like, you know, little disposable ones or stuff like that. But uh, I just remember stopping motion was a very interesting kind of concept um, where you could just stop time for that, for that one moment. Um, I appealed partly to my rebellious side where I could stop time, the one thing that we don't have control over. For one moment, I can stop it. And that was very interesting to me. Just that idea that you can you can stop motion and transfer the light of the world onto film, and it was just very interesting to be able to kind of alter reality in that way. That's the one thing that's really fun about photography is that you can alter the perception of light and time, and so if you open your shutters. Um, for longer amounts of time, you let in more light, uh, motion becomes blurred, and you can get these images that show motion or, or other aspects of reality that our eyes don't necessarily pick up. Um, when you see someone run by, there's not really a still image of a, of a blurred person running by or like a trace of them. 
And so with the photography, you can kind of capture almost a, um, I want to say behind the scenes element to life, but a very kind of um, different world that our, our eyes and our brains just don't see. Um, and in that way, the camera is a little bit more, I suppose, freeing to us. We can um, alter reality to what we, what we kind of see in our heads. Um, if you want to take pictures of um, star trails or something, you couldn't just look up, the, up in the sky and see the, and see the star trails. Your brain wouldn't process it like that. So with the camera, you have the option of either taking that still shot or letting the star shows um, start to appear in the, in the photograph. And so in that respect, um, you're able to see more through the camera. I'm gonna be a photographer, probably go into uh, like a medical science field, maybe like a, a, um, a chemist or something like that with, and with a focus in, in medicine.